Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Zynert's uh, Need PG Info Guide session on uh, do's and don'ts on joining. Uh, all of you would be expecting your uh, uh, your uh, uh, results and uh, it has been delayed a bit. Uh, most likely it will come in, in a few hours time. Uh, today if the provisional results are published, most likely you will get your final results tomorrow only. This joining will also start from tomorrow as per the notification. We will look at the, once you are allotted, you might take uh, a, a decision based on the institute, etc. You have already filled your choices uh, based on what you want, but you might take decisions on joining, non-joining, or uh, joining and then moving on to a state seat, etc. Here we, we are purely going to look at the joining part. This might possibly be the first part of the session, possibly of the first few minutes, we'll tell you uh, in case you're going to decide on uh, non-joining or basically awaiting a free exit, we'll take you through that. But beyond that, the entire session is for candidates who are willing to join. Now, if you look at it, uh, if you look at it, uh, the candidates, this entire joining session, it is possibly going to be a 45 minutes to one hour session, but this will help you throughout the All India counseling process, round one, round two, round three, the entire list of things that you need to know and the list of points that you need to be aware of, what you need to take care of before moving on, etc. Everything we'll cover in this single session. So possibly all your queries will be sorted out. There will be very minimal queries after this session. This has two parts. One is pointers and suggestions and second is, second is do's and don'ts during joining. Uh, first thing is uh, in case there is a change in rules, MCC comes up with something, etc. Uh, we will add a, uh, add a add subtitles or captions. So if you are watching it after two, three days, just look at the captions or subtitles. We will anyways notify all the changes uh, in case they change, but uh, there is a change. But uh, if you are watching it after two, three days, basically today is uh, the 7th of August. If you are watching it on 10th or 11th, you can just add on the subtitles. Keep looking at notifications in MCC or in Zynard. Uh, any changes or any new uh, additions to rules or requirements, etc. We will be updating that. So common queries, uh, we'll sort out the common queries now. The free exit and rules, that is something that we'll sort out now. So basically there have been a lot of queries on free exit. Who? Uh, what is free exit? Basically a candidate who has been allotted. You get an allotment today. Uh, tomorrow in the final result it remains the same. So you get an allotment today. Will uh, in case you are not interested in joining, it can be two three cases, one uh, two three proper cases. One uh, you filled a choice that you are not interested in, and that is something that we did not uh, uh, advise not to do. But still, you filled a choice that you are not interested in. Now you do not you are not willing to join in that join. Then that is you will avail free exit. Second. You go to the institute, many of the NB diploma institutes, there is no information available. In case you go to the institute and then see that it is not an institute that you would like to continue with. This happens in quite a few cases as far as NB diploma, new institutes, MDMS, peripheral institutes are concerned and a lot of cases, a lot of similar scenarios. Then you decide not to join the institute. Basically, you visit the institute. Till the time your admission is done at the institute, you can await free exit. Basically, till the time the institute enters in intra-MCC that you are admitted, you can avail free exit. And the third is possibly you are waiting for your state round one results. Let us say you are waiting for Madhya Pradesh results Madhya or Sikkim results or any other results. Madhya Pradesh results come in on uh, uh, 11th, I believe. So uh, when the results come in, in case, uh, in case you get a, uh, get a seat in Madhya Pradesh state round one or any state round one, on that date, you will decide between your Madhya Pradesh state round one seat and All India round one seat, whatever you get. And if you decide to go with the state seat, then you will not join your All India round one. You, you would say, I am not joining my All India round one seat, I am joining my state round one seat. So these cases you will uh, exit, uh, you will avail a free exit. Now what uh, we will uh, we'll tell you, uh, what are the rules of free exit very clearly. There has been a lot of confusion created because of certain, uh, certain uh, clauses and a lot of others also communicating that uh, there are changes in rules, etc. It is a very simple thing. Free exit, first you need to understand free exit is as good as no allotment in round one. This has always been the case with uh, MCC. So free exit is as good as no allotment in round one. The seat comes back to round two and some other candidate is going to this, take the seat. Till now, whatever choices you have done, that is fine. This is a benefit for other candidates too because a candidate is going to leave that seat and it might go to a lower ranker for whom it is valuable. Free exit is almost equivalent to no allotment. What does this mean? Round 2, if you avail a free exit, round 2, you go with the same registration. You don't need to re-register. Round 
3 in case you offer upgradation here you will still be eligible this free exit will not impact round 3 in round 3 let us say you are not allotted you are eligible for round 3 you are not allotted in round 3 you took free exit went to round 2 round 2 no seat let us say you did not join or you there was no seat in round 3 you went with no seat when you entered round 3 and you are not allotted in round 3 you are eligible for r4 which is stray so who is this candidate free exit in round 1 went ahead to round 2 at the end of round 2 no seat either exited with four feature or resigned within two days or uh, uh, resigned within the last date etc so exited within four feature these candidates when they go into round 3 they don't have any seat right such a candidate, if, it, if the candidate is not allotted in round 3, they will be eligible for stray. So, free exit first does not impact stray. So, that needs to be very clear. Free exit does not impact stray. Uh, there has been some confusion. You might come up with clauses, but that you can check with the MCC if you wish to. We are very strong on it. This is how it has been happening over the years. Uh, the interpretation of the clause also, we are very clear about what it is. You can check with the MCC. Now, second thing is, how do I avail free exit? What do I need to do for free exit? I want to avail it. Don't do anything. That is the primary thing. Please don't go to the institute and ask whether I have to take free exit. They might force you to take the seat. So basically, don't do anything. Don't log into MCC and click something. Don't even log in. Just remain at your home between 18th, 8th and 14th or any place where uh, or at least don't take any effort to call up the institute, don't do anything basically. Calling up the institute and saying that I might or might not join, might end up in the institute assuming that you missed out something, they might enter your admission details. If you are availing free exit, don't do anything. If you are confused, then it is okay. But if you are availing free exit, don't do anything. Don't call up institute, don't call up MCC, don't, call, don't log into MCC, don't go to the institute, do nothing. That is what is free exit basically. You can even go to the institute basically. Let us say you go to the institute. Uh, while we said that you don't go to the institute, you go to the institute, check at the institute and clearly tell them if you are not joining, tell them I am not joining, nothing is to be done in the portal. So this is free exit. Okay. So this is basically free exit. Don't do anything. That is very clearly free exit. We will go on to the next thing. Before we move on, what happens when you are joining? Before we move on to the next query, what happens when you are joining? When you go to the institute and follow all the process, the entire process is over, the institute goes to intramcc.nic.in. This is the portal for the institute. Just like you have MCC, they have intra-MCC, which is between the institute and MCC. You don't have to do anything for joining in the institute. You don't need to log into MCC or do any, anything. They will check all your documents, get your fee, uh, get your originals, uh, check your documents, uh, uh, con and confirm that you have paid the fee and then they will go to this portal and in the portal they will check that you have completed all your processes and print out, say this candidate has joined and print out an admission letter. We will show all this, uh, uh, how it looks like etc. So print out an admission letter. This admission letter from Intra MCC, who will give you this? Institute will give it to you. You don't need to do anything. Institute will give it to you. That is the final confirmation of joining. This needs to be there with you in hand once you complete join. So this is the entire process. So till this final check where they say submit in Intra MCC and get your admission letter, you have time to decide on join. Okay. If you are not interested, just don't go to the institute, give your documents and then decide two days later. Tell the institute you have to wait and I will decide or tell the institute that as of now I am not joining, wait. Once they do this, your joining is complete, you cannot go back uh, later uh, uh, unless you want to resign the seat at a later point in time, that might be a possibility that will come to. Now, this is pretty much and uh, we will go to the second question, uploading documents. This has been a query that many have been coming up with. Uploading documents, everybody's query is this one. I am not going to join. I am availing free exit. Should I upload documents? No, it is not required. If you are not going to join, you don't need to upload documents. Second, I am confused about joining. Should I upload documents? Upload documents. Don't need to worry about the fact that once you upload documents, your joining is complete. No, you can still avail free exit. 
we what did we say joining was you go to the institute there in intra mcc they click the final submit button and get your admissions letter right that is joining till you do that you are in the mode of free exit only even if you upload the documents there is no confirmation or finalization that your seat is yours you have joined only after going to the institute without fee payment no institute will su uh, submit your uh, details and say that your admission is complete every institute will have the formality and only then they'll submit so this is a very trivial process this does not mean joining if you are confused you can go ahead and upload documents and then don't do anything you will still be under the free exit mode let us say i have uploaded documents and then go to the institute some of the documents are different uh, like i have an obc certificate today to by, but i am expecting the latest one in a few days time don't need to worry whatever documents you have when you are going to the institute that is what matters this is a very very trivial thing don't need to worry about it what are the documents required we'll come to that we'll list down they mentioned that essential documents are required they've also listed down the same for ug2 whatever they mentioned in the brochure is what is required with a little which are, which are little lesser than that so get your documents ready but don't need to worry about this in fact we'll finally tell you ug this was not mandatory this was optional in ug so this is something that you don't need to be worried about one day is there etc and all you will get some information on this later you got, even if you don't upload or miss out one or two documents that is fine original documents are required or not yes a big yes don't go with a uh, with all copies original documents are required in case one or two originals are not there institutes may provide a flexibility may provide a flexibility in case you have you're waiting for your original degree or your permanent registration you're waiting for you only have a provisional they will accept usually uh, you will have to call the nodal officer and check before and usually they will accept we'll come to the nodal officer part but original documents are required don't go there and say that i am bonded i am all my original documents are there with my bonded institute you will have to uh, give me admission the entire purpose is to ensure that you are free out of all the limitations and you are ready to join a course that is the purpose of checking all your original documents and ensuring that you are admitted at only one place at a time so uh, one institute at a time and original documents are a requirement first year fee payment there are many candidates asking first year fee, fee payment is required or not we are going to join round one seat then i am going to upgrade either to state or i am moving to state or might upgrade to round two itself should i pay the first year fee payment why is it required because anyways i am going to upgrade to a different institute i know that i'll get upgraded those logics don't work first year fee payment is required it is required without first year fee payment you will not be able to join the course every institute will insist on it don't go uh, with the assumption that some of the institutes may be flexible uh, 30 lakhs is my fee 20 lakhs i'll pay the now and come back and pay round to uh, 10 lakhs in the round two the, those do not work usually especially with deemed universities you will have to they'll be uh, re ready to have another candidate so go ahead with the first year fee payment mdms fee payment is at the institute so this is one major distinction you have to do that at the institute go to the institute and pay the fee at the institute dnb you pay the fee to nb how do you how do you pay you will uh, you hold on now there will be a link provided everything we will run a separate session on dnb fee payment payment with exact screenshots of what to do course commencement when does the course commence now that is the next question i am moving on this is a very very important question most of you would have uh, been waiting for it i am going to round one i am joining on 10th august let us say institute at the institute i have joined i am joining an mdms course in a medical college will i be asked to join uh, immediately now this is where you need to understand the distinction between the terms joining a little bit theoretical theoretical but whenever you come across these terms in all india just to ensure that that to ensure that the meaning is clear joining reporting admission all these three terms throughout the mcc prospectus or any notification mean going to the institute submitting your originals paying the fee and getting admitted you join report admit all these three mean the same it does not mean what does it it does not mean start of duties okay so when is the reporting period mentioned 8th to 14th august right 8th to 14th august that is the reporting period not start of duties or commencement of course start of duties and commencement of course both mean the same thing which is the actual course commencement you don't need to start your duties on 10th august you will be given time what is the time 
NMC has clearly prescribed that after September 5th, only courses can commence in this academic session. What is September 5th? September 4th is the last date of joining of round 2. Round 2, All India. Once this, day, once this joining is over, any institute across India offering an MDMS course or a PG diploma course, uh, MDMS course, basically, in a medical college, basically, all medical colleges can start their courses only after September 5th, which means you will start your course commencement is what? Duties. You go to the HOD, you start your duties and that will be after September 5th. Every one of you who is joining an MDMS course will come back after round 1, wait for round 2, round 2 ends on September 4th. After that only you will start your course. Very clear? This is as far as MDMS is concerned. DNB2, if it is DNB, there will be institutes, most of the institutes will understand if it is DNB, that you have a round 2 to go to and you will be joining the course at, after round 2. They will agree to come back on September 5th or around that timeline and join the course. DNB does not follow the, uh, does not fall under the NMC criteria. This is a flexibility that the DNB institute gives. Like they know the process because they are part of the MCC counseling process, they allow this. Even though they do, don't need to follow the NMC September 5th criteria. So if you are getting a DNB seat, possibly 10 to 20 institutes out of how many 1100 dnb institutes are there across india in all india counseling itself out of these 10 to 20 institutes possibly will ask you to start the course immediately after you join don't need to worry about it you call up your nodal officer and check with them on this very very few institutes will ask only reason why we are mentioning it here is in case you call up your nodal officer and they insist, some public sector uh, DNB institutes do that, basically. Uh, in case they ask you to immediately uh, start uh, after uh, joining, then you might have to start. That is a limitation. Check this with your nodal officer uh, or just wait for some communication from other candidates who have joined before you travel in that scenario. They will give you 2-3 two, three, two, three days time or 4-5 days time to come back and then go ahead. But Plan for this in case start of duties is required immediately in those very, very minimal DNB institutes. Now, uh, uh, do, uh, don't claim that it will be September 5th because that does, regulation does not count for DNB institutes. They have the, uh, uh, the prerogative to ask you to join duties. Now, uh, we will close one minor query. What will happen in case I join uh, uh, on uh, September 5th? Let, uh, let us say in a DNB institute, I join on August 10th. They ask me to start the course, then I move on to a different course in a different institute on uh, in the second round, September 2nd. It is unfortunate, but your course commencement in the second institute will be September 2nd. You will have to start work another three years over there. So that is something which is very unclear. As of now, this year for round 2 to round 3, for MDMS 2, you will have to uh, go through the additional period, etc. Because your admissions in the last institute, whichever day you start, that will be the date of course commencement. Like after September 5th, if you are... Uh, uh, September 5th, let us say every somebody is commencing a course. Then from September 5th, 2023 till September 4, 2026, you will have a three-year period when you are joining. Will the institute provide flexibility after September 5th? That is up to the institute. But if they insist on September 5th after round 2, you will have to join. Now, uh, joining process, we come to the main part, which is the joining process. We will quickly run you through it. It is a very simple thing, just that your queries are clarified. Uh, there will be simple queries, yes or no queries mostly, just the queries are clarified. What is the process? First thing to do is, once you get the allotment letter downloaded, you will get the allotment letter downloaded. When will you get the allotment letter downloaded? Provisional will be released today. Usually they release it when we are running sessions. So provisional will be released uh, today. And uh, once the provisional letter is released, Tomorrow there will be a provisional result is released, then tomorrow there will be a final result. We expect that it will be tomorrow or late tonight in case since the provisional has not been released uh, till now. Final result is released, after that, after a few hours, possibly even 6-7 hours or a day, you will get the allotment letter. Where will you get it? mcc.nic.in under the same login, wherever you have, there you will get your allotment letter. So once you get your allotment letter downloaded, you will have to, you can, uh, you will need, you will have the nodal officer's contact. This is an institute level person 
and this phone, the person's phone number will be there in your allotment letter itself or you know your results right what will you what will you know you will know your final results go to mcc.nic.in we already shared the 1457 institutes participating institute info there the nodal officers contact will be there once the final results are there you will also be able to see that so once the allotment letter is downloaded first thing is to connect with the nodal officer for information on joining go to the website to see institute website to see what is the process of joining etc and most of the medical colleges will have this information almost 60 70 percentage of medical colleges will have this information on the website itself dnb hospitals some do have but the nodal officers will be accommodative in dnb hospitals call them up and check on the dates requirements we'll let you know what all you need to check this is the first process second thing is once you download the allotment letter you will uh, you will uh, see that it mentions provisional allotment don't worry about this word provisional some will tell you that this is provisional because you go and get an admission letter later we talked about an admission letter later right at the institute at the time of submission so only after your originals are submitted you get a final allotment letter no it is not like that it just mentions provisional they will always keep it provisional only even this admission letter later will say provisional only don't need to worry about this part your admission is over even if it says provisional admission letter your allotment is finalized once you get your provisional allotment letter uh, it is the final result which count and once you get your final results it will take some time for the allotment letter so don't uh, panic you will get your allotment letter you can download it even at the institute after one day if it comes up you can plan your travel and download at the institute take your decision on travel only after the final results don't plan travel before the final results today let us say provisional is there don't rush and get your flight tickets by tomorrow tomorrow morning let us say there is a minor change in the provisional usually it doesn't happen very rarely there is a change between the provisional and the final results uh, but some goof up happens let us say there has been a, uh, last uh, let us say three years there have been three or four times when minor changes have happened or one time one or two times when goof ups have happened where everybody's results have been uh, confused so in that scenario uh, you are if you had planned travel you will face an issue don't plan travel till the final results are published documents first thing is to upload all the documents if you have them this might be optional wait for notification get all the original documents required bond and other documents who will tell you about the bond uh, agreement and everything the nodal officer will tell you or last year's last year's bond details will be available uh, just check the bond or other documents in case you have to get it signed from your sureties who can't travel with you parents or somebody nearby who is a gazetted officer this bond purely depends upon the institute if you call us up and ask for the bond no we are not the right people it is the nodal officer who is the right person because they will share the format whatever format exists in the mcc may not be the right format the current format always check with the nodal officer or somebody who is attending the uh, who has actually gone to the institute and checked at institute verify your uh, they will verify your documents what is the process at the institute the institute will verify your documents you will submit the originals all the originals need to be submitted this is a uh, uh, this is a requirement since a candidate should not be admitted in more than one institute at a time some dnb institutes may not ask for it ask for it but submitting originals is a requirement as per the prospectus you need to pay your fee first year fee payment how we how you pay the fee we'll come to that as in what is the mode etc willingness for upgradation always opt for upgradation this is a very very crucial thing that you need to look uh, do at the institute if you don't opt for upgradation r1 i have given 10 choices my i got my first choice so which means i have got my best choice do i need to opt for upgradation you would still say that you opt for upgradation in case you don't want to upgrade in round two you always have the option of not filling any choices you will retain your first choice again but if you want to take a decision later after not opting for upgradation you will not be able to go back you will have to resign that seat so always opt for upgradation and keep the upgradation option open if you want to retain your round one seat always uh, you will just need to uh, you just uh, shouldn't fill your choices in round two you will retain your round one seat complete formalities in the institute and get your admission letter so the admission letter generated from intra mcc is very important do you need to do anything you don't need to do anything the institute will enter all your details they'll check right we said and then finally institute will generate and give you an admission letter that will also say provisional don't need to worry about it that will also say provisional it does it does not mean that your admission is yet to be completed provisional admission means admission is done 
and come back and like we said wait for state r2 if you are MD mdms obviously everyone will come back and wait for state r1 or all india r2 dmp alone check on whether you need to continue with the duties like we said 10 to 20 institutes possibly will ask you to continue duties and but they'll give you time most of them are flexible give you time to go back and come back after a few days uh, purely depends on the hod too but yeah mdms they cannot uh, ask you to do the, uh, uh, start duties in case you they ask you to start duties it is like you are doing it uh, without any reason till september 5th anyways all that you do is not accounted for after september 5th anyways you have to do three years uh, three years uh, of uh, course uh, in admission letter this is the final confirmation you have already gone to the institute and joining process is all over before coming back moving out of the institute ensure that you have your intra mcc printed admission letter institute will give you that how will it look you can always come back to this uh, this uh, video at any point in time and for any query you will be able to see most of the answers here how will the intra mcc admission confirmation look look at it you will have your name roll number application number it will say 2023 over here they haven't changed the format your round number choice number institute name allotted category everything will be there and it will also have the time of allotment over here uh, it will mention the time of allotment it will mention uh, round one and so on and it will say all the details whether everything has been checked etc the most important thing that you need to check in the admission letter is this in case you have provided willingness for upgradation this part over here will have a willingness details which will mention willingness for upgradation yes candidates want to participate in next round of counseling so this is willingness for upgradation which means you will be able to fill choices in round two check this for sure uh, check this for sure before leaving some institutes might tell you see uh, i we will do it at a later point in time yeah yeah you go ahead we don't have time now hod is not available hod is gone for a function but uh, we need other processes the person who is managing the system is on leave today uh, he's gone for a marriage without this admission letter don't leave the institute whatever they say your flight is there your flight is not there ensure that you get this admission letter this is the first confirmation that they are going they've done the job or follow up and get this admission letter to 14th what will happen is they'll get all your originals and they will not enter in the system some institutes don't enter every year you see 30 to 40 candidates solid 30 to 40 candidates who would have missed that we are not creating fear but this is something which is a very simple thing that candidates miss so that is why uh, we are insisting get your admission letter because those candidates lose their seats it is for a mistake which is done by the office you should not lose your seat so ensure that you get your admission letter this is one confirmation that you can get this admission letter this itself is enough let us say you have come back and the institute is telling that we have already entered we have already entered uh, you don't need to worry we will send you the admission letter in two days time there is a second thing that you can do to confirm what is it check in your mcc login go to your mcc login under the seat allotment result this is there right hope you are able to see this uh, this is visible seat allotment result so under the seat allotment result if you click on it a page will open up which will have this particular thing seat allocation activity round one seat allotment result is completed this is your results download provisional seat allotment letter completed and then it will also say seat reported and confirmed so what should it say seat reported and confirmed should be there in addition to this there will be a thing that says seat reported and confirmed we will also share that in the channel on exactly what it is if it says seat reported and confirmed only if it says that it means they have already done their admissions even if they don't give the admission letter this letter is not there you can still check it in your login any one of these is fine if you have it that is confirmation but your willingness for upgradation you will be able to check only in this letter not in your login willingness of upgradation will be there only in the admission letter so now this is pretty much this is the process your major part is the provisional admission letter getting the provisional admission letter uh, which is different from the allotment letter the allotment letter you pick it up from mcc provisional admission letter the institute gets from uh, uh, gets from intra mcc portal and they will give it to you before travel i am going to travel what do i need to do first we look at all the that you know, need to do before travel we have split into stages one before travel what do we need to do holidays check with the institute who is the institute who is the institute uh, uh, contact the nodal officer check with them in some cases you might not be able to reach out to the nodal officer in that case you can make use of our telegram groups it might not be active please 
we have tried our level best to create telegram groups for institutes it's not an offer uh, it is not a service that we are offering because candidates last year wanted that we have created 1500 telegram groups for each institute uh, but unfortunately uh, i mean uh, we have been asked that why the telegram groups are not functioning that is not part of a service but please use the telegram groups if somebody responds that will be helpful but uh, and there you can check on the holidays days taken etc if somebody has gone in there or with a nodal officer ideally with a nodal officer some in some local holidays may be there you might have booked a flight for two days those two days the institute might not be functioning such things happen very rarely some government institutes are there i think uh, today's seventh right seventh and so uh, uh, 12th and 13th i believe or sundays and saturday and sunday so 12th and 13th uh, uh, whether 13 they are working etc all these you need to check 14th anyway is the last day which is a monday so check on that before traveling don't make it till the last minute don't don't uh, try to plan everything till the last minute earlier is better if you are deciding uh, but in some scenarios you might have to take it till the last minute Wait, uh, check with them whether they are available fee payment amount and mode of payment check with the institute institute only can tell you that it can be dd rtgs or neft usually if it is a deemed university it will be rtgs neft options will be available if you are uh, paying let us say more than 60 lakhs check with them how multiple rtgs is possible or not usually they allow uh, a split between two uh, banks etc if you're paying 40 lakhs then 20 lakhs from one account etc those are usual things that uh, are allowed but check with your institute DD is allowed in certain institutes. We will come to why uh, DD is beneficial in certain deemed universities if they allow it and uh, check with the institute. In some government institutes, you have a chalan or a cash process. What, uh, what they will do is in the home bank account, they will give you a chalan. You enter all the details, go to the bank, uh, uh, the uh, bank branch in that particular institute. Within that institute, usually there will be one or a nearby one. The, you will pay the amount, get it sealed and then come back and submit it as part of your originals along with your original document saying I have paid the fee. This challenge is provided at the institute or you pay cash at a cash counter in the institute. Usually this is only in government institutes. Check with the institute and nodal officer on how to make the fee payment. As long as you have money in your account, that should be sufficient. And all these are modes anyways, you can do it either online. If you have money in your account, you don't need to plan for anything. You just go there and all these modes are available except for DD. You don't need to plan for anything. Course commencement will be only on September 5th or later for MDMS that we have already mentioned. Before travel, uh, full first year fee needs to be paid. Plan for full first year fee. Don't expect any relaxations. Uh, tuition fee, additional fee is something that you have to ask the uh, nodal officer or go to the institute website. They would have mentioned, uh, usually MDMS institutes, they do mention. Some of the government institutes too, do, they do mention. Don't miss that out. We have already had every joining uh, notification of previous year available in the system this year's we may not be able to pull out it is a uh, let us say there are 600 700 uh, institutes within the first few days we may not be able to pull out but you can directly go to their website and you can individually or check with the nodal officer on this uh, no adjustment of security deposit let us say you have paid 2 lakhs and you go to a deemed university the fee is 30 lakhs this 2 lakhs is between mcc and you this 30 lakhs is between you and the institute so these don't talk 30 lakhs you will have to pay no deduction of 2 lakhs and you paid 28 lakhs so that part be very clear uh, similarly in a government institute too if the fee is 30k and you have paid 10k you have to pay the full fee 30k in the government institute and uh, dnb dnb you have to pay uh, to nb online we will come up with a session on that we will come up because last year uh, every year there is confusion we have finally gotten some uh, uh, some inputs from our admin of previous year, uh, a doctor uh, who has been able to help us out, uh, thankfully. So that uh, we will be adding on as a separate session. And takes time to reflect, don't panic, which means rip allotment letter has come. Let us say this is 8th evening, you have got your allotment letter. Immediately we want to make DNB fee payment. It might not happen so. What will happen is N MCC will send the allotment list to NB. To whom are you going to pay? NB. So it will take some time for MCC to send this and only on 9th or possibly maybe 9th morning or 10th around this time, you might be able to see this link. Last year it came in a little early. So 8th, uh, if it is, uh, if the final allotment comes in and allotment letter comes in, by 8th night or 9th only it will come, uh, you will be able to pay the fee. Don't panic. It will lead us a 10 minute process. You will be able to fee pay the fee. As far as DNB is concerned, our, our suggestion is you will have all net banking 
credit uh, net banking credit card debit card options neft option will also be there where you will print out a chalan go to the bank or you pay through your bank account through neft don't take this option there have been uh, after you pay through because all these are direct transfers once you transfer it takes you back to the dnb portal and immediately the amount is reflected this is not a direct transfer it takes some time for neft to reflect etc and in some cases where there is a failure you cannot pay and again etc so those issues will happen suggest not to use neft till the time i mean if you don't have any of these options then use neft uh, that will be better and online reporting and payment right bank account so this is an issue that candidates have faced uh, over the last few years uh, mails keep checking mails only from the official accounts second because everybody knows that you your number roll number name etc or even email id is available with uh, many uh, sources basically you go into some of the registration portals and type in any roll number every every detail is available it is very uh, it is not the right way to do it but yeah many portals do many counseling portals themselves give out that information so validate information like let us say you get a mail saying that i am calling you you are allotted in a uh, gandhi medical college you get a mail saying that uh, mahatma gandhi medical college we you need to pay the fee to this particular account without connecting with the nodal officer or without an uh, possible bank detail or something shared in the website or without connecting with the candidate don't make the payment okay unless it comes from an official email id don't make payment payment you can always go to the institute and check with them and then make the payment there have been one or two cases where candidates have been frauded out of this ensure that you respond only to official mails official contact is always available in the mcc institute info under zynard resources first thing itself is the the mcc participating institute info is available for every institute in a single pdf you can search for your institute the link will be available in the description too documents what are the documents that are required to be up taken these are the list of essential documents that are required to be taken essential document is not mentioned here in one place but allotment letter admit card result mark sheets one or two mark sheets are not there don't need to worry about it uh, if your originals are not there take a copy like my first year is not there second year is not there in case i have all the three years put together as a transcript or a separate uh, my university gave it as all, all three years put together that is fine mbbs degree certificate internship completion certificate this is wrong august 11th and permanent or provisional registration certificate hsc or hsc basically higher secondary course or sslc or birth certificate any one of these for date of birth proof and one identity proof one is enough if you have two please don't ask whether i need to carry two if you have two carry two if you have three carry three if you have four carry four that is always uh, okay one is enough that is very clear and uh, uh, here you have your category certificates that need to be carried if you are a pwd candidate the one taken from your disability center the online print that is fine that they will have but uh, the one you have taken that is fine if you are an ews scst or an obc candidate the certificate in the prescribed format before going ensure that you take enough photocopies three four five photocopies of all these certificates you are going to deposit it in an institute next time let us say you don't get an upgradation and you are going to continue with the institute for, through the final thing. You have to depend upon the office to get any copy for any purpose, state round one, state round two, etc. Take copies before submitting your original certificates because you will be submitting your original certificates, right? Take copies. These are the same certificates that are required for uploading to. So you would have got a scan for uploading ideally, correct? Ensure that it is saved in a drive or an email. At least send an email to yourselves. So that at any point in time you will be able to get it from your google drive or your email don't keep it in a pen drive and uh, lose the pen drive ensure that it is in a cloud format somewhere in cloud or on email somewhere uh, that will help you at any point in time you can take a printout of your scan and uh, upload it for whatever purposes throughout the counseling process and for the next three years till you complete or till you complete your bond going back and asking this office to give your originals back it is a process in many institutes many don't uh, many create issues there so uh, just uh, ensure that you take enough photocopies now uh, these are good practices up to you uh, to take a decision uh, based on the timelines that you have if you can't find if you can't uh, find your uh, uh, what is it admit card or your rank letter we have already go to zynard under videos uh, under zynard on the top you have home resources and video section go to the video section search for uh, nbe ad or admit card or scorecard you will get a video on how to apply for it uh, you can take it at a later point in time even if you are not able to upload it not an issue uh, you can either upload rank letter is basically your uh, scorecard march 25th one 
or if you don't have that upload the recent one july 20th which is the aaq scorecard which has the category rank any one is fine you can take those to, those, those to the institute as well in case you don't have that then you can uh, check with nbe one or two days they'll send it to you uh, look at the video and sign it under admin card additional documents are bound this you have to check with the nodal officer only he is the only point of contact he or she is the only point of contact for this additional certificates are not mandatory but bond may be a requirement even though it is not in the essential certificates additional certificates like i am asking for an atom certificate bona fide certificate migration certificate mcc even for ug they notify that a migration certificate for schools it should is not part of the mandatory certificate states should not ask for it similarly they will not refuse admission for this additional certificates reasons this is required essential this part migration in atom bona fide etc is not essential but if you have it take it so that you don't need to uh, actually explain it to them etc you don't need to go through that uncomfortable conference conversations and arguments gap certificate it is only required for maharashtra and a few other institutes possibly one or two but check with them if a gap certificate is required we have also have a session on gap certificate just go to the same videos portal search for gap you will get the gap certificate video how to get it and what is the format etc everything is available you get a certificate it is a self affidavit no 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 one needs to sign you need to print us on a stamp paper and you need to sign it and there needs to be a notary who authorizes this basically basically notarizes it this can be done within three hours max three hours near the institute where you are staying so this is not an issue at all uh, and if you are not going to join us institute in maharashtra you might not require this too maybe rarely one or two institutes uh, so this is done then during joining at the time of joining what do what should you do you have uh, taken all your originals you have checked everything and you are going to join at the time of admissions finally say this willingness we said the willingness to upgrade right that is yes because don't uh, if they make a mistake here that is a problem why is it very important you are not choosing this the institute is choosing this so you will have to ensure that they mention willingness is one or two times at least mention that upgradation i am i am willing for upgradation please enter yes there and suggest to always offer, offer upgradation uh, keep this into in mind in case you are looking at upgradation before leaving the institute check with them one on the resignation process in case i come back what happens r1 i am admitted in this institute right r2 i get upgraded what is the process i need to go back to the r1 institute why two reasons one certificates are there original i have to get it second relieving letter has to be taken from intra mcc itself this institute will give you a relieving letter only then you can go and join the r2 institute so these are requirements beyond that there is a fee payment refund too correct you will ask for a fee payment refund so check with them on what the resignation process is and then take a decision on this for example let us say there is a deemed university which says that you can provide a dd for 30 lakhs and the resignation process is that we will deduct 75000 and give you back the remaining account amount you have two options rtgs or neft payment and then pay 30 lakhs and then wait for 30 lakhs again in your account before for r2 payment this might get delayed how many days of delay first you have to check with them because based on that you will have to plan for additional amount for r2 let us say they are saying that this 30 lakhs when you go and resign it will take 10 days you don't have 10 days in round 2 so you will have to go to uh, you will have to plan for additional amount let us they say they give you a choice this will take time but you can provide an dd and 75000 is to be deducted right here 75000 deduction will take 10 days anyways even after 75000 deduction let us say they give you an option saying provide us a 75000 dd or transfer 75000 we will immediately return back this dd good option for you you can encash the dd again basically cancel the dd get the amount in your account and immediately within one or two days you will be able to get that amount so those options be very clear about with the institute usually in government institutes refund take a lot of time so if you are looking at r1 government r2 government and then a possible up upgrade in r3 government in between these states etc all this we plan for it try to plan for it it is a in very rare cases it will go beyond a 1 lakh 1.5 lakhs thing it is a huge thing but still plan for it at least even if you are looking at r1 r2 separate 
payments across is what you need to plan that will help your process to be smooth without waiting for a refund single day process or not check with them and here ensure that you ask them whether there are any specific formalities that i need to need to bring in or do before round two uh, after round two if i when i come for resignation and uh, fee deduction and timelines we mentioned during joining uh, in case you are upgrading on resignation or on resignation fee deduction and timelines you have to check this is also relevant for deemed when you are going for sorry when you are going for r1 of all india to state r1 that resignation after joining that let us say you are resigning that is also relevant uh, on how much time you will get a free refund and what is the process etc no transfer of fees remember that r1 30 lakhs you pay r2 this is between you and the round one institute they will pay it back to you only it will take five or six days r2 you have to pay this will not get transferred over here r1 will not transfer it this is for all india counseling some states it is different states follow a better process all india it is between you and the institute so plan for that refund is upgrading to state r1 seat like we mentioned when will be the refund etc just check with that especially if you're joining deemed universities you can check if it is a private state r1 seat you have to plan for another fee end of joining what do you need to do after you join get admission letter generated check for all details in the admission letter and willingness for upgradation yes we have multiple times mentioned that because there have been issues in candidates doing uh, candidates getting this done common queries can i upgrade from mdms this, these are common queries nothing related to joining but these queries will come up over the period of next uh, week before joining you will be a little anxious uh, on these so we're just covering it up mdms to dnb yes r1 mdms to r2 dnb is very much possible similarly dnb to mdms dnb to nb diploma any seat to any seat is possible whatever you are eligible for you can go ahead and uh, move like dnb to dnb dnb to mdms what happens in terms of fee uh, that we have a separate session on that you can check that should i physically report even if i am opting for upgradation yes you have to physically report everybody has to physically report whether an authorized representative is allowed or not is purely dependent on the institute it is the institute's prerogative you cannot claim mcc will also not support if it is a genuine case let us say uh, uh, there are certain candidates who might uh, uh, be uh, the expected date of delivery might be in the next week or so in those cases institutes will be flexible but they will uh, provided it is a genuine case so just call them up and uh, mention that this is how, uh, this is the scenario and this scenario i am not able to come in then if it is genuine definitely the institute will accept or mcc will also help you out should i do in any anything in mcc login throughout the entire process you don't need to do in, in anything in mcc login for completing the admission after admissions just for checking we said right whether your admission is complete where you will get a, 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 a seat status as reported and seat confirmed that is the only time you need to log in this is after admissions are over to confirm the admission allotment and as in uh, confirm the admission in the sense you don't need to click anything here you just go there and see that this is the status just view the status so that you uh, it is assurance that your admission is completed by the institute allotment letter when will i get it uh, uh, a few, it takes uh, a few hours after the final results or possibly the next day morning how to get nodal officer contact it will be there in your allotment letter or in the mcc participating institute info i don't want to travel and anyways there is movement this is an usual curry i don't want to travel but anyways there is a lot of movement uh, basically in shift in round two etc every year there is a shift should i take free exit up to you to take a call we don't suggest it this year especially the r1 retained seat can be resigned within two days correct without forfeiture so we always suggest that if you are interested in that seat if you actually think that the seat is valuable don't look at closing ranks etc this is a once in a time career thing that you are doing for your post graduation go ahead and ensure that a seat that you are interested in is available for you you fill the choice for that reason uh, not only that in case somebody else changes their choices at a later point in time there might be an issue so uh, uh, so in uh, b suggest you go ahead and join if that seat is valuable for you don't assume that there will be shifts etc and take a different call can someone else appear on my behalf we have already covered that bank requirement guarantee in esi gujarat rajasthan uh, there is a bank requirement esi is not required now no bank guarantee is required very clear it is only from the second year rajasthan to in round one bank guarantee is not required so don't need to worry about it we'll run a session on this don't need to worry about it you just need to submit a bond in round one in rajasthan gujarat to a 10 lakh bank guarantee is required 
but if you are allotted in a government institute in gujarat but what happens is they provide you time like uh, uh, leeway of one month or before you submit it after the admissions uh, check with your nodal officer and then take a call uh, name related issues we have got the most queries that we have got in terms of documents is not with respect to whether it is uh, valid uh, valid or not i have a name related issue in spelling uh, with respect to my uh, uh, registration versus medical versus uh, registration versus degree versus uh, aadhar versus pan versus uh, what is there in their uh, in your neat pg uh, examination thing versus what i applied as nothing matters if it is a simple mistake like initials a arul being mentioned as arul a or siddharth this is the original spelling you actually have this in one of the certificates none of these matter seriously none of these matter your mother's maiden name has an initial extended extended initial none of these matter these are very very trivial things max they will ask us to provide an affidavit what is an affidavit you sign in a stamp paper with a notary how, how many hours it takes one hour don't need to do anything go to the institute if they ask for anything do it registration certificate versus this certificate don't need to worry about it at all name spelling related issues are very very minor issues one out of thousand institutes will raise an issue in that one out of thousand institutes you just need to provide an affidavit so nothing needs to be even planned for it don't need to worry about it believe us no issues at all if they ask provide an affidavit mcc itself has mentioned it in the rules opted for upgradation will i have fresh choice filling op option yes everybody has fresh choice filling don't miss out opting for upgradation because there is somebody told you that there is no fresh choice filling we have closed up the groups for this reason sincerely going through last year where on the last few weeks prior to the last few weeks we had closed up the groups because there were wrong responses and candidates did not assume that they were signed responses no opt like exactly the round on free exit stray rule if you look at the inicet group everybody is saying something different go with simply whatever is mentioned in the channel or in our videos uh, in case there is a no clarity we also mentioned that there is no clarity and try to get clarity through the candidates calling up mcc etc so this opting for upgradation even if you opt for upgradation you will feel fresh choices in round 2 it you can re ch change your choices in whatever way you want pre exit if i pre exit what are the chances of me getting a seat no no clue because that one seat one candidate can be who is higher in your rank let us say there is one seat or three seats all it takes is three candidates above your rank to change their choices this is not predictable at all chances you can say i can say that it is 90 percentage based on last year let us say this does not matter because for you are you fall under the remaining 10 percentage you will be this 90 percentage chances do not matter at all it is your seat that matters so don't go with all these probabilities or possibilities uh, even uh, based on if you have done a statistical analysis analysis absolutely irrelevant your seat matters in, in case you, your seat is valuable try to join will the timeline be extended even if they extend the timelines it will be on like you saw in the choice filling it will be on 14th late afternoon you can't plan for this so there will be uh, groups where candidates will keep uh, complaining that this was the issue this is the issue i am not able to travel in my state this is happening etc your timeline is this timeline 14th plan for 14th august or even one day prior at 13th august some institutes do work on sundays uh, if you not try plan earlier now that is very important go and go by generic representations that happen to mcc saying let us all plan and uh, uh, represent difficulties will be there there will be difficulties definitely it is challenging uh, there will be dd related issues etc but everybody joins every year so within the timeline some more candidates are able to manage in respect of the challenges that mcc uh, puts them through with a short timeline etc they some more manage so it is manageable you will join but go ahead and join on by 14th august 14th august they don't mention the timeline 5 pm is the timeline usually don't assume that it will be till 12 o'clock and in case it is not there after 5 pm you will lose admission so go ahead one day earlier at least go and join don't wait for timelines expect uh, extended timelines if there are representations too don't believe that the representations work because even in that you will see that candidates would have gone joined and representing you will see that okay so those candidates who have joined will form the group and say that yes let us like represent but their joining would have been over it is your seat go ahead with your seat join common queries fee transfer uh, so fee transfer how it happens 
between all india round 1 to all india round 2 mdms to mdms it is straightforward you will have to pay in the first round 1 mdms institute you will have to pay in round 2 mdms institute if they don't give a refund you will have to pay dnb to dnb once you pay 1.25 lakhs in round 1 and you do a free exit you don't join you resign doesn't matter whatever you do after payment you will have to pay you don't have to pay another 1.25 lakhs here in round 2 if you get another dnb seat once you pay 1.25 lakhs so i am going to the dnb round 1 institute paying 1.25 lakhs after that whatever happens to the seat doesn't matter r2 you are allotted a dnb seat r3 you are allotted a dnb seat whether free exit whatever you do the same receipt is enough for dnb there is it from nb so one 1.25 lakhs is enough this is a critical scenario where dnb you pay 1.25 lakhs once you pay to dnb this amount unless you join a dnb seat it will be only refunded if you move on to an mdms seat later clear you pay 1.25 lakhs in round one to nb you are allotted an dnb seat 1.25 lakhs around one to nb be very clear this amount either goes to your final dnb seat r1 r2 r3 at the end of it you have a dnb seat or an nb diploma whenever we say dnb it is also nb diploma it goes to that institute or in case you paid 1.25 r1 go to an mdms seat we have a separate session on this just search for dnb go to an mdms seat at a later point in time in this admission session 2023 maybe a state seat or an all india seat finally after six months after NBE verifies that you have joined the seat and you are continuing after six months to one year you will get this 1.25 lakhs back clear in case you don't join an mdms seat you paid 1.25 lakhs in r1 you resign or you didn't even go to the institute after payment you just rushed in with the payment if you don't join an mdms seat this is gone so before payment of 1.25 lakhs in round one wait check go check the institute many institute many candidates what they do in the rush pay 1.25 lakhs when allotment is done immediately i'll make the payment four hours five hours the link was not working link is working now i've got a chance i'll make the payment go to the institute the institute is not good take a free exit and decide to go on to the next year this 1.25 lakhs will not be refunded unless you get an mdms seat later or you move on to an dnb seat so this one payment of 1.25 lakhs takes five minutes 5 to 10 minutes you can do it at the institute itself where you go to the institute and then pick up your uh, mobile and then make the payment online itself it is a simple process don't need to rush into that 1.25 lakhs payment so i think an mdms to dnb this is fine uh, this we missed out r1 if you have paid to mdms institute they will refund to you next time you get a dnb institute you have to pay 1.25 lakhs in r2 again you have to pay 1.25 lakhs so whenever you get a dnb seat unless you have paid earlier you'll have to pay 1.25 lakhs. Now, uh, thank you. So this is pretty much from us.